Hello, me again, and now to uh, complete or to continue our journey through the pyramids, we now have a, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, six layer, if you call this a layer, six layer pyraminx, the royal pyraminx. So how are we going to navigate our way through this? Well, when looking at this and analyzing it, um, you try to figure out strategies very similar to the Professor Pyraminx. And of course what stands out is aside from this top layer which is really more vestigial and for show, uh, the center layer now is pretty much like a Pyraminx. It has the same number of layers just in the center as the original Pyraminx. And you've got a variety of different types of edges that they have to deal with. Um, with the Professor Pyraminx you had two of the inner edges that articulate with the center. Now you've got three. <coughs> And among these three, there's two different subtypes, which is going to be the one in the middle and um, the one at the end, and they're dealt with a little differently. Here, of course, you have four um, outer edges, two of which you deal with exactly the same way as the Professor Pyraminx, and then you've got these other two, which kind of cross over. So you've got a lot of different overlapping, or actually non-overlapping segments that you have to deal with. So it's like it's a couple of puzzles in one. Uh, turning is pretty good in this particular this particular model so let's scramble it and see what we can do Alakazam and there we go so it's my understanding there's not a whole heck of a lot of these guys out there so it's a uh, kind of a neat puzzle to um, to have and to to play with here so starting off I, I did as complete a scramble as I could even the top parts here too so just to kind of get us in the mood we might as well start putting these in here Got the green up over here. This down along here. Kind of a throwback to the old regular pyramids times. This turns over here. And this turns over here. Okay. So the first step is um, just like with all the previous ones is we try to define our sides. So we're going to put all these triangles together as much as we can. Red, red, here's the other red. So in no particular scheme and by no particular order, <clears throat> just, uh, just move them in. Move the other red one in here. Yellow, yellow, move the other yellow one in here. So simple stuff so far, green and green. Now the next step, I'm going to kind of pattern this after some of the other puzzles that we had, the Professor and also the, um, uh, the Master Pyraminx, is uh, we want to start defining our centers. Um, what my strategy is, is we're going to define uh, the center parts along with our faces, but what's going to define that first is going to be these three um, triangles over here. So this is going to be likened onto the um, middle triangle when we had three with the Professor Pyraminx. These guys, these triangles, are going to come in later and these are going to come in at the end. So this will be the equivalent to the center triangles from the Professor Pyraminx. These are a whole new animal that we're going to have to deal with a different way. This is what this particular puzzle adds to, the, um, adds to that. Luckily there's not too much in the way of new algorithms, just applying strategies <clears throat> to this. So we're going to be using techniques that we've used from the Volcano Cube to put these in and also to, um, to do some other stuff. So let's go find a, here's a green here, and just rotate that in like so. Find another green. Here's the other greens over here. So we'll just rotate these in also. Turn this to move it out of the way. Move this in. And do we have to turn any back? Yeah, we'll turn this back. Now, you notice I'm moving this very cautiously, and that's because the core of this is kind of held together um, in a little haphazard way, and it's very easy for it to be um, to come apart. A new core is on the way, so I should be able to move it a lot freer. Anyway, the rest of them, here's a yellow, two yellows. We'll just put that here for now. So two yellows. Where's the other yellow? Here's the yellow. other yellow over here. So now we've got to move this in. So we're going to move this in by turning these two here. 
and we're just going to do an exchange. So this moves in like so. And we turn, and this moves back. So we've got all of our yellows in place. And now purples, so we're going to start moving those in as well. Move the purple in. Okay, so we'll just start doing some exchanging. This comes here. That'll turn. And this comes out, so that we don't mess up the other centers that we got. And turn this back. And the final purple over here. So this is not too much different from the volcano cube, or volcano pyramids rather. Turn this in, turn it like so, and turn it back. And then turn this back down. Now the other difference between this this puzzle and the others is you do a lot more deconstructing of this cube, of this puzzle rather, to put things back in. Now in doing deconstructing, uh, as we were solving some of the cubes, such as the the crazy planetary series. Deconstructing the cube was um, somewhat complex in terms of bringing it back because you had a lot of overlapping layers. The Megaming series, um, you had a lot of non-overlapping layers, so I really didn't have any problems with the deconstruction and reconstruction. This puzzle I find a lot harder because everything overlaps. So if I do too many complex turns of deconstructing, I oftentimes get myself lost finding my way back, so it's something to bear in mind. Anyway, I've got the arbit the um, allotted centers in place. These guys, these guys. So we've defined our signs, uh, si sides, and we put in our centers. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to want to deal with these centers over here. This is a com completely different kind of a species. The way that I'm going to do that is every one of these centers in the pyramid are going to be in conjunction with a particular inner um, middle edge that it articulates with, in this case here. And I'm going to want to associate these things because every time I do a move like this, I'm going to dissociate them. So I want to make sure that as I move them, I move them on block and I, um, I, I can keep them in place. And I know that they're all going to be in place once I, once I have all of these, this middle crystal area formed. So here's, here's what I mean by that. To put these in, you do it very similarly to when you put the edges and match the edges in on a volcano cube. It's really the same kind of thing. So let's give an example of what I mean here. This is already in the two yellows. So what I'm going to want to do is turn it upside down. I'm going to use this as my reference face. Turn it upside down to move a blue one in here. So to do that, it's then just like a pyraminx. Move it down across, up, and move this back down here, and then down, across, and up. And as long as I maintain these crisscross forms, I just make sure that I move this, that I move this back. Um, I won't knock out my centers. So you can see my centers are still fine. By that I mean these three centers over here. So this is up here now, and I want to move a blue one into here. So I need to find a blue bottom. But here's a green one here, which is in. So I'm going to turn this upside down. OK. So those are up there. See what we can do here. So I want to move a red one in here. This red one will coincide with that pretty well. So I'm actually going to turn this upside down here. Turn. So I can match this red to here, like so. So I put this red in. Once I've done that, I'm going to move this out. Let's say exchange it with this green. I can anticipate maybe something else I can put in. This blue is going to move down. I can maybe move that to here. So we're going to move. So this blue is going to make it to over here. And in so doing, this gets turned back to the red. So I'm putting this side back in. All right, so now this is in. So I've got this solved here. This is solved here. 
this needs to be solved, this needs to be solved, this is solved, anything on the bottom, good, good, good. Okay, so we've got a couple down over here. So I'm going to start moving some of these already solved ones out and putting some of these guys in. And I'm not going to have it in any particular order at this point. Alright, so we have this here ready to be put in somewhere. So this orange, this yellow rather, can meet this one down here. And I'm not really messing anything else up, so far as I know. So we'll turn this to here. And that basically puts this whole thing in. Did I put anything else in in the process? No. All right, so we're going to move this down. And do I have another one that I can move in? I can move these guys in. Now, which one do I want to move in? Well, I want to move this back. So this blue one, it would be nice if I can move a blue bottom one in here, which could be any one of these. So I'm just going to move this down. Turn, turn, turn. We'll just move our center centers back here. There we go. Now I want to move this back. So this blue will meet this blue. How about this red? We'll meet this red. So we are good. We are good. So turn this over here. All right, so this is good. This is good. This needs to be put in. So now I'm just going to clean up the pieces here. What's left? There probably isn't that many. So this needs to be put in. Okay, there's this one over here. So this needs to be put in. So this green will make it to this green. And I got to find a blue one over here. So what I'm going to do first is just turn this, uh, turn this upside down. So the strategy that I'm going to do is Ultimately, what I want to do is turn this out so that I can move something in and then turn it back. So if I, and still have things solved. So I'm going to turn this over here and I see that this is in, this is put in, this is put in. So everything is pretty much solved. But now how am I going to turn, how am I going to turn this back and not destroy something? Well, it's pretty easy. All I've got to do is make sure that all these three are the same color. So I've got a blue, a uh, purple here, purple here. I just got to put a purple one here and then it'll be no problem. So let's find a purple color that, that I could use right over here. So we're going to move this one in. So I'm going to turn this like so. And now I'm going to just move this purple up to here. So turn, turn, turn. Okay, and now I'm free to move this any way that I want because I've got all purples here or blues, however you see that. Anyway, so, so that's all in. So basically I have all of these in, all of these are where they're supposed to be. Now, s since I've done that, since I've loaded those in by moving these into position, just like with the, um, with the professor pyraminx, these centers will become solved. These guys you don't have to worry about because these caps are solved at the end and this is placed individually. So that's the only, that's the first major difference between this and the, and the other puzzle. 